focus on Chicago. Um, obviously, you're disappointed when you end the season on a note like this, but the season isn't over. I think both can be true. Welcome in, Hawks fans. Your boy Bryce is back at it again for another Believe in Hawks episode. Hawks regular season has wrapped up, and now we look ahead towards the play-in tournament as they play the Chicago Bulls at 9.30 this Wednesday. Uh, really not going to talk too much about the game, uh, regular season game from yesterday. I mean, pretty much for the most part, Hawks level at 157 points. Pacers scored over 500-plus points on this team this year. Pacers are a terrible matchup for the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Hawks just can't match that pace. They can't, they can't match what that offense is, and it exposes their weakest defenders uh, a lot. One of the main examples, Bruno Fernando. So they really not much to talk about that game. But one thing coming out of that game, I will mention before going into my regular season wrap up, the disappointment, the Vic Krejci stuff, and then getting into play in preview. Uh, Trey Young is now the all time leading assist man in Hawks history, passing Doc Rivers, doing it in only six seasons and doing it at just in his mid 20s, 25 years of age. Trey Young doing it again, making history. And listen, he's probably going to have a lot of the records that the Hawks have realistically by the time he leaves. If we're, if we're being completely honest here, he is probably going to have a lot of the records that we have here um, in Atlanta by the time he, if he leaves, trades, retires, whatever, which is a great pres uh, precedent for him. But now we got that out of the way. We can focus on the regular season recap. We can talk about Vic Krejci first. So the Hawks yesterday, before the game, had a decision to make about Vic Krejci, right? And if they were going to convert him into a full NBA regular contract so he could be eligible for the postseason. The Hawks decided to not do that. Lauren L. Williams from the AJC reported on this on her Twitter and said that they made this decision because of the fact that he'll be a restricted free agent this offseason and that they want to sign him to an extension next year. Uh, there's, you know, they also feel like they want f flexibility, flexibility, roster flexibility for the future. You know, and they'll keep the roster as is going into the postseason in Chicago when playing, right? And that obviously pissed a lot of fans off. That obviously frustrated a lot of fans. That angered a lot of fans. A lot of fans were disappointed yesterday with that decision because Vic Krejci has been such a huge contributor for us since Jalen Johnson's had his injuries and his ankle injuries. He has stepped in. He can play positions one through four. He's a he's a, he's a two way playmaker guy. And he, he has shown a lot of improvement from last year when he was with us to this year. And obviously, from that report, obviously, or from that, from what Lauren said, you know, they want to keep him long term. But people are just confused. Okay, we're going to the postseason. Are we like if we're trying to win these games? We need him because he's literally been a starter when Jalen and them have been out. And. Yet we decide to just say he won't be a part of the postseason. And so a lot of people, like I said, have been uh, upset about that. And for, and for me, you know, obviously I, it was a bit head scratching. Because I think Brad Rowland came back and said that the Hawks could have converted him to an NBA contract and still was and he would still be a restricted free agent. The, the key is, is that they just didn't want to cut Trent Forrest because and then this is something I thought about about this decision. Earlier this season, the Atlanta Hawks gave Trent Forrest his first full regular NBA contract. He wasn't a two-way guy anymore. And I said to myself, I could see the Hawks also sitting here saying, we don't want to give him a full NBA contract. Tell him how much we're proud of his progress that he has made from, from, from last year to this season. And, you know, we, we believe in him. We believe in our system. We believe in his development. And then just take that away from him just to keep it crazy. And so some, and it, obviously this is a business and sometimes tough decisions have to be made. And some fans are like, you know, no, no, cut him. Like, you know, he, he's not, he's not valuable in the long term for us. Like people don't view Trent Forrest as ever going to be a part of this rotation that wins. If when, whenever the Hawks get to that point. And so they're like, no, cut, cut Trent. 
the Hawks really like him. They feel like that he is a good – one of the strengths Trent's game has is defense. He's a good point of attack defender. He's a good defender in general, right? Um, And so people – the biggest issue with him is that his offense is is less to be desired. Now, it's it, – it's, it's, it, like, like, literally last year when he came on the team, he had no offensive game whatsoever. This year, it's still not that great, but you you you've seen some improvements in it. Uh, and I think the Hawks are banking on him continuing to develop that part of his game while remaining a good defender because that's what he that's what what he makes his money on. That's what he's making. He, he that's what he's making his bread on right now is his defense. And so I think they view him as a valuable piece for the future. And, and what the Hawks are doing is that they're valuing from first to second, third unit guys who reflect what they maybe want to become as a team moving forward. And Trent fits that, what they want to be. And so they don't want to just get rid of him for Vic, especially knowing they feel like we can keep Vic Critchie anyway. And so him not necessarily playing in the postseason is changing any of that, right? And so, but like I said, people are saying, well, if that's the case, aren't we trying to win against the Bulls? Aren't we trying to get to the postseason? Aren't we trying to do something? And this move kind of counteracts that. In a lot of people's minds. Um, now, obviously, with the Vic Krejci not being converted, that opens up opportunities. I said that I wonder if they're going to, because the last two games of the regular season, they had Bogey starting at the three, which obviously is not an ideal lineup defensively, of course. But they've had him starting at the three, DeAndre Hunter at the four, which I'm, I'm, I know Hunter doesn't really care to play that spot. And then Clint Capella, right? It, 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 it this this Vic Krejci not being converted does create opportunities um, because now you 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 know Garrison's going to play off the bench. Bo Gay's been playing a lot of minutes and he played great against Indiana yesterday. Really really good uh, performance from him. I've said before that I think Bo Gay has the most potential out of all the rookies out of this last draft class the Hawks had, and he kind of showing it last night. Just just you can see his length, you can see his athleticism. You know he had he's he's still developing that jumper. He had a couple of threes yesterday. Uh, you know, he you could see like what what he could do, especially he could impact the game both ways, two way guy, right? And so he, I, I would assume, with everything that has happened, that he will probably see time in the in the playing game. I I just don't see them not playing him because it's not like you have other people you can play. And then and then we don't know how many guys age uh, Quinn's gonna go. If he's gonna go eight guys, nine guys, we I don't know. If he goes nine guys, then that opens the door for potentially a Wesley Matthews. But Wesley Matthews has been out the last few games with some injuries, so we don't even know if he's going to play in Chicago, which then could open the door for AJ Griffin to potentially get those minutes. And that's why we've maybe seen the rotations we've seen because these are guys that may play in the playing game. And obviously Bruno uh, as well. So I mean, obviously we don't. I guess I don't. I don't know what the what the what the vision is or what Quinn's thinking when it comes to that. And 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 also I saw an interesting note before I started recording this. Um, the Hawks are going to have a 5 p.m. practice. Uh, Kevin, uh, for uh, NBA writer for the Atlanta Hawks from NBA.com. Um, I just don't want to butcher his last name because I just don't remember off the top of my head. And I know I'm gonna say it wrong. Um, he said the Hawks are having a 5 p.m. practice today, so which is rare when you're about to travel because they're having to travel to Chicago. So that is rare for a team to do. So maybe I don't know. Maybe that's something Quinn feels like he need to do. Maybe he feels like I just want to have one more practice with you guys because we don't know what's gonna happen on Wednesday. No clue, right? But. Overall, uh, it opens up opportunities with Vic Krejci not being converted for this season. But like I said, people are frustrated about Vic Krejci doing all the work, being a big part of what they've done, knowing that, you know, in general, if Jalen was healthy or not, you've made him a big component. You've made him a regular part of your rotation. Why is he not someone you're trying to convert to an NBA contract to be a part of this team, regardless if it's only for maybe another game? You know, because the Hawks may have also viewed it as, if we lose it against Chicago, we're, we're converting him for a game. Is that worth it when we can just worry about it in the offseason? You never know. But also there could be, and, they, and, and Brad and them mentioned it yesterday, they could have been trying to negotiate a longer-term contract 
and they just couldn't come to an agreement. So then they just said, okay, well, we'll just we'll revisit this in the offseason for restricted free agency. So obviously the Hawks are going to have the right to match any team that wants Vic. It'll be interesting to see if any team goes after him or – restricted free agency is always interesting because it really gives you an idea to know, okay, how much how much are you valued by teams in around the league that they're willing to potentially – like, oh, we're going to give you an offer sheet and try to get you to, like, stick. Because we don't know how much the Hawks value Vic as. You know, what what number is too high for Vic? You know? But, it, but he definitely is someone I think the Hawks want to be a part of – the future of this team and he definitely has deserved that 100 percent he's deserved that he has been a great addition for the team he when they brought him back this year started the season uh you know not on the team after being with the team he was cut after the summer league i believe and then he came back and now he's a big part of the rotation and now you're seeing here in the hawks maybe want to sign him to a four-year extension so uh but obviously i know that was tough losing vic and not having converted, and I know a lot of people are upset, and I know a lot of people are just like don't understand like what what is up with this franchise, what is up with this front office, what is up with what they're doing, what is the vision, what is going on, which I'm going to get into now. One thing that this front office has done, especially they've mentioned this again after the trade deadline is when you really heard this the most with some of the comments that people have made within the Hawks organization. They have most they have talked about on multiple occasions about the future not making short-term decisions but making long-term decisions what decision can we make that can affect this long term right you've heard you talk you heard them talk about development i've talked about development on this podcast before i've talked about how development is something that is not cute it's not pretty it's not a sexy thing it's something that can be a little slow it can be a little frustrating it's a it's also a risk because you don't know if people that you expect to develop will develop it's there's so many things around that word develop. And I think what they did with that Vic Krejci decision ultimately was they show that Vic Krejci is in their long term plans, but they don't feel like he needs to be in the short term, which is the plan and then potentially the postseason. And um, I think for me, you know, a lot of I've always said that this front office has not done a great job of making things clear, but I feel like they have after it it's just people are confused because at the beginning of the season it seemed like the goal was playoffs wins here new system players are are happy we got some talent jalen johnson breakout we're we're about to go compete in the eastern conference people would say the hawks to be a competitive team this year to expect them to be in the playoffs everything right all that and it obviously has not turned into that and, and the question could be asked was there a pivot at some point this season? Did they sit there and say, we need to pivot our expectations and goals because we have a lot of young, talented players that we like that we want to be a part of this team in the future? Obviously, one of the biggest things we've heard on multiple occasions is Tony Ressler is, is considered a cheap owner, even though he's one of the richest owners in the game. And he doesn't want to pay money, right? So one reason why they may be going with this potential youth movement with all the young talent they have is obviously these guys don't cost a lot of money. And then, you know, we'll worry. And I guess they'll worry about, okay, who do we want to pay? Obviously the next person you got to worry about paying is Jalen Johnson, which you would assume that they view him as a core piece of this team and will pay him when that time comes, whether that's this off season or the next, and you know, clutch is going to bring it up to them this off season to see if they can already go ahead, try to get a deal done with Jalen Johnson. But that that is the main thing that I've taken away is that they're looking at long term. Because if you think about this team, Kobe Buffkin, I think some people call him a defensive setter, a defensive culture setter. I've heard uh, a few times a guy who, you know, you could see his impact defensively, his communication and what he does. You know, and obviously his biggest thing coming out of Michigan was just working on his offensive game, improving his jumper, improving his three um, and just continuing to work on his offensive game, which realistically, you know, if he could become a really high level defender and then become a decent to good offensive player, I mean, that, that guy is guaranteed 10 to 15 years in this league, just off that alone. You know, you've got Muhammad Gay, who I mentioned, who has showed flashes. We've seen it in G League. He's missed a lot of this season because of an injury. He had, he had a back injury to begin the year and he missed like two thirds of the season, played some, played in some G League games, looked good, got hurt again, got caught up to the main roster while injured. Now he's playing at the end of the season, showing flashes again, Remember, he's extremely raw, hasn't played a lot of basketball in his career, in his life that much, but a guy who 
some scouting reports said, listen, he's one of the most intriguing players in this draft because if he could develop an offensive game, he could be one of the best players in this class. They're saying a guy who's projected to be a second round to undrafted guy could be one of the best players in this draft. That should tell you that the ceiling, his ceiling is starter, maybe all-star ceiling potentially. And I think we've seen flashes of that in these last couple of games. Uh, you know, you got guys like Seth Lundy. Seth Lundy played on the, on the on the main roster for a little bit. He's been dealing with some injuries uh, that's kind of kept him off the floor. He played really well with the Skyhawks, um, a guy who we know he can shoot the three ball. Uh, biggest thing they said, and that was one of the main things I think Kyle Corver said it when they drafted him, is one of the biggest things they wanted him to work on and improve is, you know, his his overall game. We know you can shoot. The, we know you can shoot. But we need you to be able to do other things as well, be a two-way guy. And, you know, like I said, injuries have kind of gotten in the way of a lot of, obviously, this team's just entire definition of the season has been injuries. But that's also affected Seth. And, you know, he's a guy that I'm sure they're still excited about. You know, Vic Krejci, like I mentioned, he – the improvement he's made, you know, and and, and 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 how now he's now a valuable rotation player for them in the future if they end up being getting able to keep him this offseason. You know, I know AJ is a guy who's kind of fell out of some people's braces, but we – but, I mean – and we don't know what AJ's future is, but you would have to assume there's still some expectation there with him uh, to be a part of this team moving forward until until the day comes where he is traded or cut, whatever. Uh, you know, he's another guy, young guy. You know, obviously, and I'm not even talking about Jalen or, or Kongu because they're definitely going to be a part of this team moving forward. But and then you still have a draft pick this offseason that you could have. If you're losing a play and you'll be a lottery pick. So you'll potentially have a potential lottery pick that you could also add to this team. So you can see what I'm saying is that there's a lot of young talent here on this team that people think could become good NBA talent. And I think the front office sees that. And that's why they're like, you know what? We're not going to rush it. We're going to, that's why, what's his name? Steve Coon, Coonan was like, we're not, we're going to do it the right way. <laughs> you know, Um and I think what he meant by that was just we're going to develop our guys. And the thing and the thing why it's frustrating, especially for fans, is because what they're doing, you usually do when you know you're going to stink. <laughs> and so you and, and, and you expect these guys to be a part of your team moving forward. And then you eventually add talent and become good. They've got guys like Trey Young, who people are worried about these years could affect if he's going to stay or not. You got DeJounte where they're going to decide what his future is. You know, you got guys who you are like, whoa, aren't we trying to get to the playoffs and be competitive and try to, you know, do something, go deep or something? And, and it's just different. Because, I mean, you look at Oklahoma City, you know, they got a bunch of young talent. So, you, I mean, the Hawks could very much go into a full youth movement next year. And their most oldest player coming off the bench is probably going to be bogey. And everybody else is going to be like second, third, fourth-year players. That legitimately could be what the, the Hawks bench looks like next year. And so that to me is where they have to make those decisions and they have to figure out what is the future. And, and then when they get that down and they know what they want to do, and obviously they're trying to make it work with Quinn and what they want to do and et cetera, et cetera, then they'll, you know, have a clear picture of what this team can be. Um, you know, and obviously – We'll have to see. Like I said, the two big names that you're probably going to hear is DeJounte Murray and Clint Capella. And we'll see what they decide to do with both of those players. Obviously, you know, we, you expect something to happen. Again, this, 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 again, standing pat is the worst thing that this front office could do because, then it, again, there's no justification for standing pat. It, you know what you got to do to become a better team. So are you going to do it? Are you going to insert the players that are needed to do it? And so and so so on and so forth. So for me, especially, um, you know, I, I think I think that's just what's frustrated the fan base a lot. It's just they feel like they haven't gotten a clear direction of what they're trying to do it or if they know what they're trying to do. They don't understand it because it's like we do realize like we can't just go through just having these types of seasons and then expecting Trey Young to just want to be here or expecting these guys to want to stick around because. You know, at some point, you know, we got to be able to show Trey that we're ready to take a step in the right direction and compete in the in the Eastern Conference. So it's risky and this may backfire on them. But at the same time, this is what they're going with. They're going with the slow, steady development approach. And 
that's just what it is. And like I said, Hawks fans aren't going to like it. Hawks fans are definitely excited for some of the young guys, but they also want to win. And that's why the Vic Krejci move and th- some of the things they've done this off season, this season, it's just been so head scratching to a lot of fans because they're like, but aren't we trying to win? But Landry and a lot of them have talked about, we're looking at long-term. We're not going to make short-term decisions that could change our long-term that we want to become. And so if this team's trying to become a more defensive team, guys like Kobe and Muhammad could be big in that moving forward. And so they're just thinking about, okay, and Vic too, and thinking about, listen, as long as we got these guys for that long-term journey, the short-term will we'll, we'll live with whatever happens in the short term. So, you know, I had to get my takes on that. And then now let's just go into the, the just a quick Chicago Bulls Hawks play in preview. Uh, Bulls Hawks playing in this game will be in the Windy City. Uh, apparently, the Steve has only played three times this year uh, based off of this record. And the uh, Bulls won two to one in the season series. Um, Bulls this year are 20 and 21 at home. Hawks are 15 and 26 on the road. Hawks obviously losing the season six straight games. Not ideal, realistically. But the Bulls, you know, lost their last game of the season. Bulls are not the greatest offensive team in the world. Hawks are top five in offense with points a game, points per game. Um, but obviously defense is where they lack. When you look at the statistics, it looks like the Hawks should win this game. Um, but we don't know. We have no idea. Right now, though, the Bulls are favored. If you're into betting, if you're into the over and unders, or if you're into just point spreads, they're favored by three right now um, against Atlanta. Hawks have injuries. Bulls have injuries as well. So both teams are coming into the game a little bang, both banged up and everything like that. And really the key to this game is just going to be how the Hawks handle the size of the Bulls realistically. Uh, handling the size. And then obviously the Bulls are a, I like to say the Bulls are a hard-nosed team a little bit. Obviously you know what DeMar DeRozan can do. We know that he's the mid-range assassin. But obviously we know what DeJounte Murray can do and we know what he can do with the mid-range as well. Uh, both both teams are coming into this game just trying to, you know, continue their seasons. I know there was rumors for a minute of Billy Donovan potentially walked to Kentucky after the John Cobb probably left, but obviously that didn't end up happening, so he'll be here as far as we know. We would assume maybe the Bulls are heading towards a rebuild this this offseason as well. So we, and you know, we don't know how meaningful this game is to them, but obviously you're in front of your home crowds, so and this is your one play, last game of the season that you're playing in front of your fans unless they make it into the postseason. So obviously you know they're going to come out there and play with energy and, get, and, and be ready. And obviously the Hawks, you know, this this time, you know, you're, if, 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 if you go with the lineup they've gone with, it's going to be an interesting defensive matchup because DeMar DeRose is just going to def, definitely attack guys. He's going to attack all three guys, Trey, DeJounte, and uh, Bogey. So that will be an interesting chess match to see what Quinn does there because, you know, when you have Jalen and you have DeAndre, you can throw a couple of guys like that on, on DeMar. Now you don't really have that. You pretty much only have DeAndre right now as your defensive stopper guy. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they defend De- DeMar. Do they double team? Do they do they play play off? Do they just say, well, for the results, what he can do? Um, you know, obviously, with Drummond being hurt, that also has been key. He's been the one player who's been really killing the Hawks this off this season when they've played. Uh, he had like a 20-20 game earlier this season against this Hawks team. And with him out, you know, Clint Capella has had pretty good games against Vucevic. Uh and so if he can continue that going into this game, the Hawks may have an advantage in the front court, which they usually don't have. Drummond has always been, like I said, the one who's gave them the most problems. So realistically, that could end up being big for the Hawks not having to deal with Drummond in this game. You know, and obviously the biggest thing is like, listen, the, like I said, the Bulls are not a great offensive team. Hawks are a good offensive team. So, you know, if Trey Young comes out and gives, you know, his normal stat line, DeJounte has a good game, Bogey hits some threes. They offensively, I feel like they should be able to score enough points to outscore Chicago. Obviously, they have to be able to play defense and get stops because obviously if you don't play defense, even the worst offensive teams in the league can score points in this league because they're all NBA players at the end of the day. But it, it's, it's going to be an interesting chess match between the two of them. You know, last time they played, you know, Kobe Buff and Jalen Johnson made an impact in that game and helped with what they were trying to do defensively. And then they were able to get enough offense going. 
shot the ball really well in Chicago, and that was able to help them get that win when they played there last time. But, you know, this time, like I said, it's, it has more of a postseason feel, postseason uh, atmosphere, postseason uh, environment. So, you know, both teams are going to come in out there ready to go um, and, and ready to play, you know. And then, listen, this could be the last game that DeJounte and Trey Young play together. That's something that we have to look at. Uh, so I, I feel like those guys are definitely going to come out if this is the last game where they're going to go out swinging. I think those two guys are going to go out there and give it their all and try to, you know, do what they can to be successful as a team and try to, you know, keep the season going. You know, I, I think I think from what I see off social, I think a lot of people think Hawks should get past Chicago. We'll see if that actually ends up happening. Uh, like I said, they did end the season on the greatest note, but, you know, that is something that I think some people are expecting. And so overall. Moving forward, you know, if they win that game, then they'll play the winner of the eventual 7-8 game, the loser of that game, uh, which is the Sixers in Heat right now. Obviously, if you're looking ahead of that matchup, some people may want to say we want to play the Heat, maybe. I mean, it's kind of hard. I mean, the Sixers are playing their best basketball because Embiid's back because their team's built around Embiid, and they have talent around him, and now they'll be the probably the most dangerous team in the Eastern Conference because of that. Where the Heat are a team where you just you don't know because – Jimmy Butler could just start going crazy and they just do the stuff they've done the last few years that have helped them go out and make long runs in the NBA playoffs. So, that, it, it, like I said, the Hawks get to Boston. They're going to earn that. It's not going to be they went through two teams they should beat. They're, they're going to earn getting there. But they got to take care of business in Chicago or else the season is over. So we'll have to see how that goes. But that's just my quick you know take on that game moving forward. But, I, um, but yeah. so But I appreciate you guys tuning in to Believe in Hawks. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Go ahead, leave your comments down below on what you think of some of the stuff we talked about in today's show, what you think or what your prediction is for the play-in as well uh, for the Bulls. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Bryce Jones, Twitter 2K. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If this is on YouTube, like the video. Don't forget to also go ahead on audio, leave a review and a rating as well. And tell your friends about this Hawks podcast and let all your other friends come to the Believe in Hawks pod and talk about some Hawks with me. So definitely appreciate you guys tuning in. And it's your boy Bryce Lewis. See you next time.